Hey guys, so in the last lecture we have seen evolution of reliability or the product life cycle that in various different stages of product uh, production and its own life cycle where we can implement the reliability uh, tasks. So how we can increase the reliability by assigning various tasks in different stages till the deployment stage. So we have seen production stage, then uh, before that planning stage, before uh, after that uh, verification and validation stage, and uh, also uh, we have seen uh, design and development uh, stage. So today we are going to see design for reliability. Uh, that how we can design for reliability. So this is the last topic and this is the last. Uh, lecture of this uh, chapter uh, that is uh, quality and reliability only reliability engineering so let's start let us design for reliability so design for reliability is a process which is performed during the design of a product so to ensure that the product is able to perform the required level of reliability design for reliability often occurs at the design stage only so before physical prototyping and is often part of an overall design for excellence so before the prototyping phase so before the prototyping phase there is often part of a overall design for excellence dfx so it's called DFX strategy. So reliability must be aligned into the products and processes using the best variable science methods. So reliability practices must begin early in the design processes and must be well integrated into overall product life cycle. So overall product life cycle it should be integrated. So Previously, design practices tend to focus on mainly on functionality and robustness of the product integrity. So it was basically on the functionality and the robustness and the robustness or product integrity or product integrity. So some of the major issues like key failure mechanisms, failure modes and failure rate, usable life of product, cost of maintenance required to maintain the inherent reliability and many more were not appropriately focused in the earlier phase of designing. So to address all of the this issues, the proper the process of design for reliability has been developed to ensure a predictable and reliable life of a use of a usual components so some of the key elements for design with reliability are first configuration design so first it is configuration configuration design so configuration design is a type of conceptual design activity in which physical systems are synthesized from a set of predefined components that can be combined only in certain ways. So the physical configuration is the key important characteristics that determines the reliability of an asset. So depending on the severity of the product, service and the maximum economic reliability of available component present in the product. So it may be necessary to build redundancy into some locations. The second is component selection. Component selection. So, selection of components is an essential, very. So, the bulk of part selection work is done during the concept planning phase of the product life cycle. So, the process provides a balance between functionality cost manufacturability and reliability then the third important key element 
for design for reliability is verification and performance testing verification and performance testing so it is a possible that even after creating a strong configuration with the robust components that product may be unreliable and final assembled product may not always perform as expected as a result it is necessary to verify that the assembled product functions as expected it is essential it is also essential to assimilate the wear and tear that represents an entire life using accelerated testing then the fourth product uh, fourth uh, element is concurrent engineering concurrent engineering so concurrent engineering also known as simultaneous engineering it is also known as simultaneous engineering so it is a method of designing and developing products in which the different stages runs simultaneously rather than consequently consequently so concurrent engineering is a feature that ensures that design is not completed before reliability requirements are identified and dealt with then fifth is customer needs so it should be designed as per the customer needs only now last sorry now next a uh, topic is techniques that we can improve techniques to improve reliability in design techniques to improve techniques to improve reliability in design now various techniques are used by the design team to improve reliability so first that is reducing variability reducing variability so variability is in the material property had a huge impact on the probability of failure of a product hence affecting the reliability of the product too the probability of a failure can be reduced if without changing the mean value of the material properties if we could reduce the variability in the properties so not changing the mean value but uh, without changing the mean value we are reducing the variability so the variability is being reduced the second that is d d rating so d rating is when the system or compound is operated below its normal operating limit so you must have heard the rating so rating is that how much it is operating from the the operating limit how much good it is operating d rating so this reduces the determination rate of the component and minimizes failures attributed to extreme operating conditions the reliability of the product can be increased if the if their maximum operating condition that is temperature pressure etc are at values lower than their normal values so uh, the extreme temperature pressure and all conditions will be should be lower in the operating conditions so are at values lower than normal values and this reduces the probability of failure and increases the reliability of the product then third is redundancy third is redundancy so redundancy is a common approach to improve the reliability and availability of a system redundancy means repetition you must have heard so re redundancy is a duplication of critical components or functions of a system 
with the intention of increasing the reliability it is a duplication of the critical components or functions of a system with in intention to increase the reliability of the system usually in the form of backup or fail safe or to improve actual system performance redundancy provides extra reliability so it provides extra it provides extra reliability so it helps so, so it helps in prevention of declining performance without direct manual intervention the importance of the redundancy increase even more when system or product is performing a critical sensitive and complicated task then fourth is durability so the material selection and the design details should be finalized with the objective of producing a product that is resistant to degradation from the factors like corrosion erosion fatigue wear and etc so this usually requires selection of high performance material which can be expensive so as to increase the service life and reduce the maintenance cost such so decisions can be justified by, use, by using techniques like life cycle costing and so on now fifth technique is replacement replacement so whenever it is required to use components with high fail rates the design should specifically take care for ease of replacement of such component so if you are if you know that that there is no solution but it will fail then the replacement should be easy then simplicity so simplification of a component and the product reduces the chance for failures and errors and increases the reliability then seven is improve the qu quality control during manufacture by improving assembly methods and improving inspection criteria then eighth improve the maintenance technique for example by using the better test equipment and or early replacement of limited life components and ninth is improve software reliability improve software reliability now these are the various techniques by which you can increase the reliability so this uh, topic comes in a techniques to improve the reliability by design now we will see inherent next topic that is inherent reliability inherent reliability so what is inherent you must have heard inherent means from inside so inherent reliability is a level of reliability that is established by the design and manufacturing process of the equipment or the system so in other words it is what it is so inherent reliability is a measure of overall robustness of a system so it provides an upper limit to the reliability and availability so it's provide an upper limit so it cannot exceed that limit so you can achieve that much limit of reliability only so suppose for an example a system with the best possible maintenance is available to achieve availability of say 90 percent we can say that this is the upper limit of the system's capability and it is determined by its design the inherent reliability of a system or a device is determined by its configuration and component selection so for instance if a plant has redundant feed pumps so if a plant has redundant feed pumps or recycle compressors or recycle compressors so the fact will greatly 
affect the inherent reliability also if the components were chosen based in the life cycle cost rather than the just fire cost the inherent reliability will be enhanced so inherent reliability differs from operational reliability which is the reliability of the asset actually observed in an operation also inherent reliability is the kind of reliability that is exhibited by the equipment when it is protected by right protective maintenance and some other default strategies inherent reliability is probably the single most important characteristics of a system it is the most single most uh, important characteristics of a, any system or piece of equipment in terms of determining overall reliability performance so design features most importantly the interactions between physical the interactions between physical or non physical components are perhaps the most important characteristics of of a system that determine a system's inherent reliability so there are number of non physical design features that can affect sometimes profoundly the inherent reliability of a system among this are operating procedures operating procedures then errors in manufacturing errors in manufacturing training technical documentation so when a proper reliability centered maintenance reliability centered maintenance rcm analysis rcm analysis is conducted on a system or a subsystem there is a good chance that the resulting maintenance actions will be enable the, the system to achieve its inherent reliability as determined by its physical design features however if the inherent reliability is below user's expectation so if it is below the user's expectation so if it is below the user's expectation so or need the them the design features are to be improved to achieve the desired level of inherent reliability in virtually every case less than optimal non physical design features almost always have negative impact on inherent inherent reliability so therefore rcm analysis is a review of existing maintenance plan along with design out maintenance is necessary to improve inherent reliability of a system various methods to improve inherent reliability of a system we framed as first monitor changes and rate of change rate of change second change the design of a system interactions change the design change the design of the system change the design of the system interactions to eliminate inherent imperfections and revise the maintenance plan then eliminate unnecessary maintenance task eliminate unnecessary maintenance task understand the dynamics through tools like vibration analysis dynamics like tools through vibration analysis in brief right amount of condition based ma maintenance right amount of condition based maintenance task schedule inspections reliability maintenance and design or maintenance would not only have to realize the inherent reliability as determined by the physical design but also improve it so condition based maintenance task scheduled inspections reliability maintenance and design or maintenance would not only help to realize the inherent reliability as determined by the physical design but also improve it so if the original inherent reliability is below business expectation now the last uh, reliability that is field reliability field reliability so the field reliability of a comparable of a comparable uh, products provides a reasonable relative re reliability prediction so a comparable product 
product can give us a reasonable reliability so one of the most difficult activities for a reliability engineer is to make a quantifiable connection between reliability results so quantifiable connection quantifiable connection between reliability results from in-house testing and the reliability experienced with the items in the field so in-house testing and items in the field so this connection is to be built here so this is the most important task or difficult task for a reliability engineer so often tests will be performed on products and development in order to make an estimate of reliability in the field so the results of the test of this test however may not match the actual field performance once the product has been released so failure time data of a, of a field of fielded system are usually obtained from the actual users of the product or of the system so due to various uh, operational preference or technical obstacles a large proportion of field data are collected so a large proportion of field data are collected as aggregate data instead of exact field times of individual units so the challenge of using such data is that obtained information is more concise but less precise in comparison to usual of using individual failure times so the most significant needs in modeling aggregate failure time data are the selection of an appropriate probability distribution and the development of statistical inference procedure capable of handling data aggregation some probability distributions such as the gamma and inverse gaussian distributions have well known closed form expressions for the probability density function for aggregate data the use of such distributions limits the application of field reliability estimation so this is the last estimation uh, that is field reliability so in uh, today's lecture we have seen field reliability inherent reliability and also durability uh, redundancy uh, techniques to improve the reliability and also design for reliability so i hope you understood this and this is the last topic of this chapter that is reliability so thank you very much